serious, redditors who have completely ruined somebody's life, intentionally or by accident, whether they deserved it or not, what happened and why did you do it? Don't talk on your cell phone in rush hour traffic without auto insurance and then get mad when I call the cops. Get your car impounded and file an insurance claim because you rear-ended me. Especially if you're going to chain smoke while waiting for the cops. If you can afford to chain smoke. You can afford minimum liability insurance. Similar thing happened to me. Only not as justice porn why. A few years ago a lady made an illegal left in front of me and I hit her car. It was totally her fault. 100%. I broke my ankle and my car was totaled. I hit her in the front panel. Where the engine is. Her car was also old. And mine plastic. It didn't stand a chance. Comma she didn't have insurance. And her registration was expired. She also didn't have a cell phone. She literally interrupted my husband on the phone with 911 to ask if she could call her daughter. In Washington state. If you're uninsured and are at fault in an accident that does $750 in damages or causes an injury, you'll lose your license for 3 years. My insurance also sued her for the cost of the vehicle. My medical expenses. And for pain and suffering. That woman was already poor. And I'm sure this ruined her financially. Not to mention she couldn't drive for 3 years. When I was 15 I had a teacher send me this long email professing how in love with me he was in detail with some graphic content. I went to my favorite teacher, the only adult I was close with, who sent me to the guidance counselor who got police involved. It turned into a whole undercover sting, I think I'm using that word right. The police, through my email, exchanged emails with him for months. Eventually there was a trial and he went to jail. He had a wife and a daughter my age. I still to this day feel awful that he couldn't take her to the ice cream store or his daughter's graduation, registered sx offender. I think he mostly deserved it and I'm still glad it happened to me and not somebody who wouldn't have had the strength and support to handle the situation. But a part of me will always secretly feel a little guilty and wonder what if I had just ignored the email. I confronted my mom when I suspected she was having an affair with an underage boy. She denied it and my family hated me for causing drama and repeatedly accusing her. Eventually she confessed and went to prison. My dad stood by her. I saw him cry for the first time ever but she still treated him like crap. He visited her every single visitation. After being released she was on strict probation for years. She wasn't able to return to her job. My dad finally divorced her because she was still selfish and always blamed other people for what happened. They had a lot of debt at the time and now she is impoverished. But she never said sorry or took responsibility for what she did. So I try not to feel too guilty. After years of suffering through my brother's idiocy. And downright illegal behavior. I turned him in for taking out multiple credit cards in my name. I was trying to buy a house. And I had no idea why I had three credit cards instead of one. Even more importantly. I didn't know why two of them were maxed out. He broke into my parents safe, they actually used my mom's fking day as a combinations. Comma got all of my personal information. And took out credit cards. He did it to my parents too. This was after he had stolen jewelry sentimental grandmother's jewelry right out of my drawer. He threatened to stab my mom. He stole one of my dad's work vans. Somehow he managed not to go to jail. But he's on probation with a long, long record. Back when I was 13. I made a friend online. I began developing anorexia and bulimia and frequently discussed it with her. I understood she was doing the same thing as me. But wasn't willing to label it or admit it was a problem for either of us. We encouraged each other to continue the unhealthy behavior. I didn't really realize just how bad hers was or how long she'd been doing until I became my space friends with her and saw that she was a true walking skeleton. And had even broken her arm. She wound up in the hospital more than once. I got better. Slowly. Eventually. I'm now married with kids and I'm incredibly blessed. My 5 year struggle left me with health problems. But nothing too awful. I'm pretty sure she died. It got her. 
she was bright and bubbly and hated herself so goddamn much and I encouraged her behavior because I wanted to justify my own behavior. I thought we would be okay. We'd be fine. I was very damaged back then. I'm sorry. Sam. I might have been able to get through to you had I not been so preoccupied with my own body dysmorphia. I had a co-worker committed into a mental institution. He was behaving erratically for weeks. Eventually we learned he had caught his best friend in bed with his young daughter. They had then run off together. He had lost his wife years ago and this last event induced some kind of nervous breakdown. Which induced psychosis hallucinations and erratic detachment from reality or whatever the FCK it was. We had footage of his strange behavior but that wasn't enough. They needed somebody close to him to sign off on the validity of his antics. That was me because everybody else chickened out and prior to this I had spent the most time working beside him. At one point he had begun to go into fits of anger after a fire landed on his arm and demanded to enter his body. Which it allegedly did though his mouth. It was then living in his chest. Demanding to know why his daughter had run off with a man 20 years her senior. Taunting him for a reaction. Every day he would go into a long monologue with the fly in his chest. And break things when it pissed him off. That's just the fun. Quaint little harmless thing he started doing. Won't mention the rest. Naturally. Batchet insane would be an understatement. Still locked up. My uncle who had retired from the army was offered a new job in Saudi Arabia as a government contractor. He wasn't sure about taking this job, long distance, possible danger, etc. Dut. My aunt wasn't sure about him taking this job either. He and my aunt were moving back to our home state to be closer to family and she already had a job back here and was living here and he had been looking for one for almost a year when he was offered this job. He liked the fact that he would be able to spend more time at home since the company was based in the town where they were originally from and that my aunt had already moved back to. In my opinion he was still on the fence about it when he came to visit. Me and him had always been close and when it was just me and him in his car he showed me the contract they offered him. He asked me should he he take the job and I told him that he should. And I'll never forget what he said next. Do you think it will be safe? I told him that Saudi Arabia is really similar to western countries and that he'll be fine. He ended up taking the job and was over there for a little over a month when he was killed in a terrorist attack. I wish I hadn't been a know it all and told him something I clearly had no idea about. This happened almost a year ago and I haven't given anybody any advice on anything since. A friend of mine lived in an RV behind his parents house. One year someone broke into the RV while we were out at a party. We came back to find a bunch of shti missing. Three months later I found out from a friend who stole his shit. It turned out it was someone else who I thought was a friend. So we went over and confronted him. He kept telling us that he didn't do it. So we called the police and he ran with one of the pieces of stolen property. The cops pulled him over while tracking his girlfriend's cell. She was also with him at the time. Comma we called her to get her to convince him to turn around and come back. When he was pulled over they were arrested. She had been to jail, domestic disturbance, but he had not. He wanted to be a correctional officer. I made sure he was on the wrong side of the cell door for that job. I hate thieves. Especially ones who try to steal from me and my friends. 1. I was working in a kitchen where the cook had a heart attack. I immediately called 911 for an ambulance. Another worker was sort of panicking. And yelling he's turning blue. Dot. I couldn't see it. He looked pale but not blue. Later on I learned victims of heart attacks often turn blue from lack of breathing. We were able to save his life. But there was irreparable brain damage because of me. If I had told the 911 operator he was turning blue I would have been instructed to give him mouth to mouth. And he would have lived a long and normal life after this incident. 2. I received a letter from the local hospital telling me I was a match for someone who needed bone marrow. But I never get any mail. So I go check on it very rarely. By the time I opened the letter the ultimatum was already overdue. And they probably were going to ask someone else to be the donor. It's not certain I screwed up. But I can't help to think what would happen to the patient if they didn't find another donor. 
What I should have done is make a call to check if they still needed my help. I was friends with this guy and slept with him multiple times. I suppose you could say we were friends with benefits. Started hanging out with another guy. Other guy becomes my best friend. Slowly I realize I have feelings for him. First guy gets really jealous. He's already got depression. Suicidal tendencies. And bad self esteem issues. Doesn't help I basically replaced him with someone else. He tells me he's gonna hurt the other guy if he ever sees him. I expressed my concerns. He didn't back down. Well. The other guy was still my best friend. So I'll let him know. My best friend gets authorities involved, not really police. First guy doesn't go to jail, but long story short, the first guy lost his job. Car. And became homeless. He's doing better now. But I did ruin it for a bit. A couple were frequenting the gaming oriented business in which I work. Spending much more money than an unemployed supposedly disabled couple should be able to afford. I befriended them. They spoke freely and proudly about the copious amounts of benefit fraud they were committing and had been for many years. After gathering enough verbal evidence I anonymously tipped off HMR and C. Within two weeks they stopped coming. Roll on three months later they visit looking a little less well off. And unhappy. Turns out they are so dumb they don't realize that telling someone who has held a job of some description for 18 years. Paid taxes. Never claimed and is very proud to support himself and his family on his own. That they are claiming disability benefits for 8 kids when they have just 3 and only 1 disabled. That they are claiming disability for themselves with no ailments and they receive you acute 500 a week and their rent is paid. Could get them in trouble. They are currently living separately and the kids are in care. I'm not even sorry. I worked as a resident assistant. My rule was be safe about drinking and sx but do not smoke marijuana on campus because that is an automatic call to the police. No questions asked. Every resident in the building knew this and if they crossed the line. It will be punished. Winter term rolls around and a sweet is smoking so we call the cops. These poor kids get some of the worst verbal abuse by the police officer. The officer was calling them names and the worst part about it is that as employees of the university. We had to remain silent and not intervene. At the end. Each person was cited with possession. Although that is a misdemeanor crime. It has real life implications such fines. Associated court fees. And having it appear on your record. One kid who got caught came from a very conservative family where substance abuse was seen as drinking a beer let alone smoking marijuana. This individual was was promptly removed from school that following week and was never seen again. Although I told every resident that was our rule to not cross. I felt extremely bad for having to enforce it in that particular event. Normally the officer will confiscate the pipe and drug. Never harass and charge. The resident never came back and was apparently working minimum wage in fast food. I had an uncle who was abusing prescription medicine and other things. He would spend all his money on CDs of dark. Depressing bands. I was riding with him when he picked them up. The CDs and contraband. He said he liked me because I didn't squeal on him and kept to myself. I've screwed up other people's lives with this tray. Anyway. He ended up overdosing and dying due to mixing pain meds with alcohol. I hate myself for it. I'll never forgive myself. And I swear to never let that happen again. Sometimes. You have to squeal. If only we would have gotten help for him. I was a dumb HS kid back then. Okay some backstory. I went to school with this girl who I could only describe as the essence of the word cunt. She would act all above everyone else and would throw around about what a great Christian she was but the next day she would be talking about her girlfriend or how she would fck some chick at our school. And she would always be such a dck to me for no reason. Basically just making stuff up trying to get me in trouble at school or with my gf. So instead of being a dck back I would be extra nice and figured I would just wait and hold a grudge. One month after we graduated I see a pic on her Instagram of her breasts showing nipple piercing she just got with her girlfriend so I took a screenshot sent it to her dad from an old number and watched the carnage. 
Her father is an old time preacher very religious apparently did not know his daughter was gay saw the pic I sent him went on her Instagram saw all the pictures of her making out with her girlfriend. He then kicked her out of the house took her car basically cut all ties with her. TLDR sent religious dad a pic of his daughter's Instagram with all the pics of her making out with woman family cut ties with her. I thought this dude at work stole $40 from me so I told the manager. It ended up he didn't take it. It was just my mom who borrowed before I left for work that day and didn't mention it to me. I apologized to the guy. But we work in a grocery store with lots of security cameras and management kept a close eye on him for that short period of time. They realized he had been taking boxes of food home. Thing is. The guy is in his early 30s. Has 4 kids. A wife who is out of work. And the job plus the food he was stealing from the store which was all he had to support his family was gone now. He actually got arrested at work and now has a criminal record on top of that. He had about 10 years seniority at the store and was probably hoping to use that to move up a little bit. All gone within a couple days. Edit. The dude cold avoided arrest but told the manager that it's not a big deal since he'd been stealing for years to support his family. I suppose. That tangentially. I may have cost a man both of his arms and a leg. For background. My dad is the captain of an oyster boat. And this guy had been a deckhand of his for a few months. One day. I decide I want to go to work with my dad. He takes me. But being five at the time. I'm playing around all day. As I'm playing around. I hide behind this sheet of cardboard. Popping up occasionally. And yelling at the guys working. During this. The guy tosses an oyster and it manages to hit me right on the top of my head. I dash to my dad. Blood streaming down my face. And the only thing he can think to do is pour his coke onto my head. My memory gets a little fuzzy here seeing as it's been 17 years. But I the next thing I remembered is being home. And telling my mom what happened. That. And my dad probably being pissed. Regardless. To the best of my knowledge. My dad fired the guy. Several years passed. And I had heard that he had gotten a job as an electrician. Unfortunately, he had been working on the second floor of some building, fell, grabbed a live wire on the way down, and had ho have both of his arms and a leg amputated. Met him. A few years ago. Seems happy enough. Wife. Kids. All that. I had an asshole professor who would line us all up and grade us on our appearances. Paying special attention to all the ladies in the class when he made really awful derogatory comments on our appearances it was a journalism class and his excuse was that appearances are important double quote one day he lined us all up and wouldn't tell us why he ordered us the way that he did but all the attractive female students were at the front of the line he walked down the row patting each of our heads and giving us a grade like he was playing duck duck goose with grades a a a b B. B. C. 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 D. D. F. 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 I was an F. I suddenly realized that this crazy man had the potential to destroy my really hard earned perfect GPA based on really unfair criteria. So I decided to do something about it. I started recording him in class. And I assembled a best hits of the most offensive. Sexist. Foul things he said. I also fact checked his resume. Which he'd given to us on the first day of class. And it turned out half of it was fabricated. He had virtually no journalism experience at all. Although he had played a reporter on TV in several primetime TV shows. I brought my tape and fact checking data to the dean. They let him finish the semester. But they intervened on grading and terminated his contract at the end of the semester. He never worked as a professor again. Probably didn't ruin his life but I will never know. Some asshole walked past me while I was out having a few drinks last Christmas and thought I called him something. Council flat scrubber, which I didn't. He kept going on about it and getting more and more aggressive. 
My partner had already waved over the police who came and started to escort the guy away to which I eventually shouted go back to your council flat you scrubber. The guy goes apposhit and kicks off with me and the police who then slammed him to the wall and arrested him. Probably didn't ruin his life but I always wonder if it had an effect on his career or life choices after that. Poor grammar. I'm no storyteller. I have zero respect for drunk drivers. None whatsoever. I could have the utmost respect for someone. But if I find out they're drinking and driving all of that goes out the window. With that being said. When I worked at a bar I would frequently call the police when people that were wasted would not let me get them a cab or have a friend drive them home. I probably was responsible for well over 20 DUIs in the 9 years I worked in the business. Was it a shitty thing to do? I guess that's arguable. But I can sleep at night knowing that I probably saved a few lives in the process. I was in a car accident about 3 weeks after I got my license. Completely my fault. And I almost died. A lot of people were involved. But only one other was hurt. A 20 something year old lady who broke her wrist. She was a tennis player. I believe she coached locally but had dreams, unsure how viable. But potential, of going pro. She had competed. I think about her a lot. I don't know her name. Or anything like that. Just that I ruined her future. I think she can play tennis still. But I've shot her chances of ever going pro. I think she attempted to sue me. But I was 16 and my mother was broke so it was quickly dropped. She didn't deserve it. I wasn't drinking. I wasn't speeding. But I also wasn't paying attention. I'm lucky I didn't kill anybody, or myself, but I'll always. Always live with the fact that my carelessness ended her dreams. I am not certain if I ruined this guy's life or not. But I very well may have. I was pretty young. 8 or 9. And my best friend and I had the same big brother in one of those this kid has no father figure programs. We went over to his house. Went to games and sometimes just hung out. On one occasion. I vaguely recall my mom telling me to change clothes. For what reason I can't remember. Must have stayed the night at the guy's house. While I was being a little shit. A common practice at the time. And I did not want to change clothes. Well this guy put me on the bed and took off all my clothes. So I freaked out. I don't remember what exactly happened after that. But I know I ended up safe at home that night. And a police officer coming over to make sure I made it home okay. Double quote. My parents went to court for me. I never went. But there was a trial. I don't know the outcome. Because my parents just vaguely say something like oh. He got in trouble. And it's pretty clear they don't want to elaborate. I just feel really weird about the situation. Because I don't think the man touched me. To be honest. I do know that I didn't like him taking my underwear off of me though. Still it's hard to think he deserves to be labeled for the rest of his life because I didn't want to change my underwear. I've caused my dad to lose the roof over his head. As well as two girlfriends in the past. Because of the way he treats his family. I take any opportunity to inform people who know him of his true nature. Generally giving him a hard time whilst also actively speaking to him so he doesn't outright realize I'm the cause for people disliking him everywhere he goes. The story behind it is quite long. So I won't go into detail. He's basically a bad man. He doesn't physically abuse anyone. But he's smart and manipulative and knows how to play the heartstrings of those around him. So, I like to wake people up to the reality and feel almost a guilty pleasure from seeing him suffer. In a divorce for grounds of adultery, we, attorney for plaintiff and plaintiff, asked the spouse of the defendant's mistress to testify as a witness. Defendant was claiming the adultery never happened and plaintiff was an addict and liar. Our witness provided, ahem, proof of the affair. Proof of financial transactions between the adulterers. And a recording where the adulterers cook up a scheme to drug the plaintiff so she will test positive for barbiturates. Defendant was employed in a public position and used that employment to further the scheme. The action was public record and defendant lost his job. He lost his assets in the divorce and is basically unemployable. I did what my client needed to prove her innocence and his fault. 
Honestly he is damn lucky that he didn't go to jail for poisoning my client with prescription drugs and conspiracy. I woke up at 4. 10am hearing my 5 pound min pin choo choo barking at the front door of my house. I opened the door and saw nothing. Which was a big problem because I parked my motorcycle in the driveway behind the gate. I looked down the street and saw taillights from a van. I took my chances and followed the taillights to a gas station about 5 miles away. While on the phone with 911 giving them directions where I was headed. I still didn't know my bike was in that van. As I pulled close to the gas station I saw a metro transit cop and told him what had happened and he drove in front of the van I pulled up behind the van. I heard the cop calling the guy over and asking him about the bike. As I look inside the van I see my custom motorcycle inside the van. I loose it and walk up to the guy grab him by his shirt and start hitting him with straight shots to the face. I must have hit him about 20 times in less than 10 seconds. The cop had to peel me off him and threaten to arrest me. When the other cops and the sergeant showed up he told the sergeant that the thief tried to run away so I grabbed him and I had to defend myself. The thief went to the hospital because his face was full of blood and cuts and bumps. His girlfriend also went to jail. And in court he snitched on the other four guys that helped him pick up the bike into the van. Later I learned that his four friends were across the street in a car when I was punching him but couldn't do anything about it because the cop was there. I got my bike back that night it had cosmetic damage but glad I didn't lose my custom motorcycle forever. I had been going out with this girl for a while and it turned out to be my best friend's ex. At one point I turned to my best friend when I was having doubts about my relationship with this girl he immediately convinced me to dump her. I did. For months she was wanting to get back together I kept declining. It turns out that she was going through a rough time in her life and our relationship was the only thing helping she didn't know what to do. So she shaved half her head turned to drugs and had sex with my good friend, while high, in the park. She's still really messed up. I changed a kid's name in high school. All he did was tell me to fck off. So from then on he was no longer Mark. But Jim. It started small. I called him it at first. Then my friends. Then his friends. Soon random people in class would until it became classes announcing Jim was in the room. The teachers all started saying Jim on the register including the headmaster. He hated me. Last time I saw him he walked into a local pub where we all announced Jim. He shouted I'm not Jim. He left and no one has seen Jim in 2 years TLDR guy told me to fck off so I changed his name. Once. I had really. Really bad neighbors. They got into some drugs and became dangerous. Began throwing rocks and breaking my son's window. Attacking us and 3 other families on the street. They didn't work. So they sat outside. Memorized our schedules. And sat in their driveway when we got home. We had tires slashed. Nails in our driveway and lawn. Broken glass in our lawn. Empty medicine cups in our yard for the dog. You name it. The cops couldn't do anything without proof. So we endured a year of making weekly police reports. Being escorted into our house. Being followed around town. Even had to set up camera to prove they were doing it. Anyways. Our other neighbors and I got together and made some calls. Their house was consequently raided. Their children were taken away. They were kicked out of their home. Eventually forced to leave town. They have several court cases pending now. Including arson from leaving oxygen tanks. Blankets and furniture in their fireplace when they left. I provided the video proving they were the only ones in the house the entire time. I'm cutting out a lot. But we all managed to get protective orders against them and they now have a super bad record. Including drugs near a school. I was friends with this girl for a long time. After a while we grew distant. Then had a fight and the friendship was pretty much done. It was rough. But it happens. Years later I met up with her again and she told me that she had had a crush on me for all those years. And after we stopped hanging out. She fell into a deep depression and attempted suicide. I was a, uh, oblivious to her feelings and b, involved with a guy. So it wasn't ever going anywhere. 
I know I can't be forced to love her back to preserve her mental state. But I still felt terrible about it. I told my cousin that his father had another family in another state. My cousin lived with his mother in a small town and they were having a really nice financial crisis. His father. My uncle. Was mostly out of town running his farm. Me and everyone knew that despite the financial problems he was having an affair with another woman and supporting her. His wife had no idea. One day. My cousin was telling me about how hard things were in that he would have to quit school. And I told him. His parents got divorced and my uncle is now all alone and became an alcoholic. My cousin and aunt. On the other side. Have pulled it off and are happier than ever. My aunt got an amazing boyfriend and my cousin is now graduated and thriving. Can't help feeling responsible for my uncle depression though. Left the bar I bartended at after closing up shop. Noticed a car parked at a railroad crossing with driver passed out at the wheel. Normally I would let something like this slide. In Wisconsin you'd wear your fingers raw dialing 911 every time someone left the bar and got in a car. But this dude was clearly unsafe and had no business being on the road. Nearby cop responded quickly and the dude was arrested. Turns out he was a regular patron. Normally only drank coke because he was a recovering alcoholic. He fell off the wagon that night and left his car and went back to get it because he didn't want his GF to know he had gotten drunk. He was about two blocks from the bar when he passed out waiting for a train. His house was another two blocks past the crossing. It was his fifth DUI and he was facing prison time. He and his girlfriend had just had a baby and apparently she was going to leave him which I guess is understandable. He killed himself and I feel terrible. It's not my fault. That I know. But had I stopped the car and knocked on the window I would have recognized him and got him home safe. He wasn't a bad guy. Just a bad drinker.